What's your name, by the way? Omari. Omari, yeah, nice to meet you, bro. I'm Jack, nice Jack Singh. Right. So, um, this leaflet is basically raising awareness. It's not trying to convert people. It's just that, as I said to you before, most Sikhs don't actually go out there and tell people about our religion. Right. We often get confused. And um, obviously, Sikhs are of all types. There's white Sikhs, black Sikhs, Indian Sikhs. But only most people are like, you know, brown Sikhs, basically. Right, right, right. Um, the message is very simple. That there's one creator who made all of us, right? Okay. And this one is more like an energy source to us, rather than kind of like an old man up in heaven. And, you know, and a, an it. actual figure itself. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But it's, it's definitely a being. It's not like a, 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 a no, no consciousness. It definitely has a, a certain presence and a certain love for all of us, yeah? Right, right. Um, but that the one, one's light is inside every single human being, right? So we believe we're all equal. Like whether you're black, white, Chinese, you know, Asian, Muslim, Sikh, the one's light inside all of us. But the key thing for us is, is to manifest that light. Yeah? and find that light inside us. So we think that, uh, we believe, like, well we know, because <laughs> we've experienced it, right. that there's a center at the top of your head that allows you to experience the one, right? Okay. It's kind of like, you know, um, things are everywhere but you see them with your eyes, yeah. right? And sound is everywhere but you hear it with your ears, yeah? Right. So God is everywhere but you, you experience Him up here. Yeah? Um, and um, the Gurus, when they went around spreading this message of oneness, of freedom for all equal, dignity for all people, a lot of people didn't believe in it because you can imagine 500 years ago the world was quite divided, right? right, right. They even had slavery in many places, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So the Gurus, in fact, they actually he went to Rome, uh, first Guru, Tibet, Mecca, Sri Lanka, traveled a lot, but realized that no one was really following this message. So what he did, he came back, set up his own community. Right. So it went down and down all the Gurus. Just a couple of examples, for example, the fifth Guru, he made this place called the Golden Temple. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of it. It looks, it looks like that. That right there. Have you seen it? I've it's never like a pool of water. Before. And a beautiful temple right in the middle of it. I've seen it in religion class. Yeah? Oh, that's about it. I've in never school, seen yeah? it. Yeah. All right. Well, the thing about that place is, is the architecture itself reflects Sikh beliefs. The right. Gurus made it, yeah? What do you mean by, what do you mean by I'll, I'll show you. It's got four entrances, right? And that means that God is open to everybody. Okay. And everybody's welcome there. Like, for example, if you're not a Muslim, you can't go to Mecca. Right. If you're not a high caste Hindu, you can't go to some high caste Hindu temples, right? Okay. So it was open, it was inclusive. So God is inclusive for us, yeah? Okay. But at the same time, uh, what's really cool is only got one way to get into the temple. For us, that's love. You can only get to God through love, right? So there's that. But also, what's really cool about this place is, you know, um, most temples, right, or most churches, you go up to get to them, don't you? You go to the bottom and you need to walk up these big steps right. and designed to impose upon you. Like okay. Christian architecture especially, were designed to be look imposing, yeah? yeah that's why you get these cathedrals and stuff with these big windows, yeah? yeah? What's cool about this place is, you have to go down. So the outside land is higher, you have to go down. So basically, the way to get to God is through humility, right? So the Guru showed us, like, be like water. Water always flows downwards, yeah? So we should be humble and go downwards. That makes sense. Yeah, so first step is humility, accept the one as great, and then go towards it with the, with the attitude of openness to learn, you know? Okay. And then love, basically. So um, now, the fifth Guru, unfortunately, he was killed by Muslim fundamentalists, right? Okay. Which happens sometimes, as you might have seen the news, yeah? Yeah. However, <laughs> however, <laughs> The, the Guru, uh, the sixth Guru, didn't hold a grudge against all of Islam for that, which is quite an enlightened viewpoint, yeah? Right. And the proof of that is that um, some Muslims came to him to ask him for help when he was, uh, he ran this city and they said, we haven't got a mosque, will you help us? And they actually made them a mosque. A mosque it, to worship street? somebody else? No, one God. Oh, that one God. Yeah, that's, that's the key thing, right? There's only one God. So actually there's no one else to worship but the one, yeah? Right. So whether you call him Allah, or you call him Hari, or you call him Ram, or you call him Wahiguru, as we do, or, or the Lord, Wait, God, what do, you, yeah? what do you guys call this? What do you guys call well, it? The, uh, uh, God has no name. Right. So, but the God's name is very powerful. So we give him a name. Okay. And the name that we use is that one. Vaheguru. Vaheguru. Yeah. So we say that and we actually chant God's name. Like, you know how Jesus said, Hallowed be thy name? Right. Yeah. So we say, yeah, God's name is great. So let's say it again and again and again. We don't say it in vain, but we say it. And, and we call upon God. Okay. Yeah, we mean it. Yeah. And that's our meditation, actually. Our meditation is to stand to sit in silence, and well not sit in silence, but sit quietly and say God's name. Yeah? Um, now, here's another cool example right, of religious tolerance. The ninth Guru, he was approached by a bunch of Hindus who said, you know what, we're being converted against our will, will you help us? And Guru said, okay, I will. And he gave his life to save Hinduism. It wasn't even his faith, yeah? Right. And so he was beheaded in Delhi by the Mughal extremists. Yeah? But even just to save or to help just to save Hindus. other people. Wow. Yeah, exactly. So here you have a head of one religion making a, a mosque for another religion. 
here you have a head of one religion giving his life to save the, the freedom of practice of another religion. So you see the gurus, they believe in this message. But for us, they set us an example. Yeah, it wasn't just uh, about saying something, it was about doing and leading right. from the front, you know. Um, now what we believe now is in this text, yeah, so the, the Guru Granth Sahib. Now the gurus compiled this scripture, mm -hmm. they put it together, no one else had tampered with it since then. Right. What's really cool is though, again unique, yeah, when they made it, they put in writings by Hindus and Muslims inside there. These were people who were saints of those religions, right? right. And they put their writings in because they wanted to... They wanted to show us that religion doesn't mean that you own God, right? So basically, the way it works is God owns us, yeah? Right. We don't own God. He belongs to everybody, yeah? Makes sense. So most people tend to say, you know, we own God. He's ours, he's not yours. Unless you become one of us, you can't have him. Can't have yeah? him. <laughs> We're like, no, no, God belongs to everybody. The key thing is to say God's name, yeah? So, see all these names here? They're all names that we that people we've used for God inside Guru Granth Sahib now why are some bolded in or is it just... just it's just part oh, of the design, it's just design. Okay. Um, so the one we use is Waheguru. Um, now what's the, here, do you like music? You look like you like music, you got music, music playing, yeah? Well, everything inside this text is all poetry. There's no stories, it's all songs, yeah? And they're meant to be sung. So Guru actually told us to sing. So when you go to a Sikh temple, what you'll see is everybody bowing to this text at the front. And right next to it, there'll be a stage. And on that, there'll be musicians. And they'll be yeah. playing. And we'll all be singing what's inside there. So basically for us, it's like, w the key thing is the way, to the way to God is through love, right? Right. So how do you fall in love with God? Sing. It's hard, right? But if you open <laughs> your heart up by singing, you can fall in love with God, right? And then remember, it's about the experience of God. So we're not trying to say to people, you know what, believe in God, believe in God. We're saying, you know what, experience, experience God. God. Yeah? Okay. And you can experience God, because it's a real experience at the top of your head, right? And it floods your mind with bliss. So Guru is trying to say, look, if you go through love and through music, you will experience the divine. And then you won't have to say, oh, I want to believe in God. You say, I know. Because I can see him just like I can see, you know, you. That's why you said you experienced him earlier Yeah, we're, we're, we're more scientific than that. We're even like, even we understand that the whole, everything is sustained by the power of the one. Yeah, because it's energy, right? Right. So for us, God is like the power source. We're like the battery. And the okay, aim of, you, oh, the aim of God, <laughs> the aim of uh, this experience is a kind of like, you know, like the Jedi Knights, yeah? Okay. Right? Yeah. So you know what Star Wars? I've watched it, but you know, I'm not really... Okay. A Star Wars, you know. You know no, I'm not saying you're a Star Wars, <laughs> you know, a Star Wars trainee, go on there. Yeah, yeah. But, you know the Jedi Knights, right? Right. They use the Force, yeah? Yeah. And the do. Force is all around you, right? Mm -hmm. So for us, it's the same thing. God is at the Force, yeah? Okay. And He's all around us, right? And in fact, we're supposed to be, actually, we're armed, yeah? We carry a sword. Right. Like the lightsaber. Well, not, it's not friend, a lightsaber. My friend yeah? told me about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we carry this lightsaber, or we carry this sword, and the idea of that sword is this. Every Sikh should be prepared to stop injustice. Whatever is happening. Justice. Well, basically, you know how they say all it takes for evil to prosper is for good men to do nothing? Right. Right? Good people to do nothing? Well, the Sikhs have been given an order that you have to stop bad stuff happening. Right? And because people are very weak, the Guru made us carry a sword all the time. When we carry a sword, it's like you can't say, well, I had nothing to do. There's nothing that I had that I could do. You have no excuses. You have no excuses. Yeah? Okay. So, and he's given us the example already, you see? So we can't say, oh, I didn't know I should do this. He's given us the order and he's given us a sword to carry with us all the time. Right. Yeah. Right. And he's made us stand out in this way, right? So whenever we walk around, people can see, oh, that's a Sikh. He should be helping. Right. If something's happening, he okay, should be helping, okay. right? So uh, 50 or 60 years ago is a very a prominent example. When people used to get on a train in India, if a Sikh got on that train, they should take a sigh of relief. Because they knew that now it's like a policeman's come on the train. Okay. Yeah? And he's going to stop anything bad stuff happening. Yeah? Because so, it's his duty. Yeah. And the Sikhs have done that. Like, for example, Indian independence, right? The be fought against the British, yeah? Right. But it seeks to like 1 or 2% of Indian population, yeah? Mm -hmm. But actually we gave like about 90% of all the deaths of the sacrifices to save India, wow. yeah? We look at that percentage difference, yeah? Not from that's, what 2% to 90%, yeah? Second World War, First World War, a huge amount of Sikh soldiers that went out there to fight for freedom, yeah? So Thanks. basically, we, it's not just, we, we don't just say it, we've done it, yeah? So, um, but one really cool thing which you're gonna like, right? Most people like this, yeah? Is that not only do we sing, yeah? If you go into a Sikh temple, you see the prayer place, you see one of the room, free food. Now, here's the cool <laughs> thing about this food. Everybody gets to eat the same food equally. But check this out, right? Um, people say, yeah, we're all equal, but they never show it. When side. you eat the same food on the same floor, right, equally, whether you're rich, poor, black, white, you know, Muslim, Sikh, it proves that we're all equal, right? We're all equal. So it's a test of equality. And at one point, the third guru, he actually had the king of the land come to visit him, the Mughal Emperor. And Guru Sahib said, 
I'm not going to uh, meet you until and unless okay. you eat food on the floor uh, 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 and then prove that you accept inequality. Okay. Yeah? So it's about it's about talking it, yeah, not just talking it, but doing it, you know. Practice what you so, preach. So exactly, exactly, and um, and the Sikhs are hopefully are practicing what they preach because at this moment in time, this place in Amritsar, the Golden Temple, it feeds millions of people a year, like 10, 20,000 people a day, come there to eat for free. Yeah, you can even stay there for free. You can even get a bus from the train station to go to that place for free. Yeah, basically, it's, it's all volunteer run. Everybody gives money to make it work. Right. Yeah? It's not like it happens by magic. People have to do stuff. But people give out of their willingness, you know. Right. Um, so we have a YouTube channel. You can check out more videos online. There's like, uh, you know, what the tea teachings are, short videos, long videos, Q&A, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. But what do you think? I mean, you said, is there a message you, you, you've got a Sikh friend you said earlier? Yeah, you know, Had he I, told you much about the religion before? He has. And, you know, we had, we used to have like deep conversations about it. But one thing I, you know, I really like about Sikhism is that the fact that you guys are like, you guys are really humble. Sorry? You guys are humble. Oh, thanks, man. Well, you know, and it's, it's not like, you know, in Christianity, everybody, you know, they really have to... It's not that they're not humble. They're trying to find the word. They're, yeah, um, they, they're kind of like a proud of their religion to the extent where they exactly. diss, diss everybody else's religion. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, Sikhism, you know, guys are really accepting. You know, everybody's equal in that sense. Well, for us, it's, it's like, okay, you know, like maths, yeah? Right. Now, there's one text of mass, yeah? Has all the knowledge there is about mass, right? But at the same time, some people know a lot of mass as well, right? But they might not have got that book. They might have got another book of mass. Mm -hmm. But it's still the same mass. You see what I mean? Kind of. Yeah, because God is like that original power source, yeah? Right. Many people, there's many ways to Him. Doesn't mean that every way is equal. Some way must have like, may have all of trigonometry, might not have the rest of mass. But still, that's enough sometimes to get to Him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The Muslims, we don't believe, I mean, we have disagreements with them on certain topics. Like we don't believe that only Muslims are going to get to heaven, right? right? Obviously. We don't believe that in the seven heavens, seven hells. Yeah? We don't believe in that there's a, there's a devil or that men and women are not equal. Yeah? But so, at the same time, we do accept that if they say God's name and they live humble lives and they are compassionate towards people, they will still get to God. Right. Yeah? It's not that they have to convert. Like earlier on today, we were talking to a Muslim guy and we had a bit of a debate, but um, he didn't want to be filmed. But one of the things that I said to him, look, as far as I'm concerned, the best thing for you is to wake up in the morning and say the 99 names of Allah with a tasbih. Same thing, same religion. He goes, you don't want me to convert? I was like, no, I don't need you to convert. Just call, call upon God. Our mission is to spread the connection, right. not to spread our religion. Yeah? And also, obviously, fight the bad guys. Fight know? the bad guys. Well, everybody needs to fight the bad guys, man. Otherwise, this world's going to go to pot. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> now, earlier you said that you guys don't believe in like a devil. No. So, say you don't live a, you know, a humble life, you don't live yeah. that life that, you know, is looked up, you know, yeah, smiled yeah. upon or whatever. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, you don't, you're not a good guy, what happens, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so if you're not good, uh, for us, if you're not good, you get to come back. Oh, so you guys believe in like reincarnation. reincarnation. Yeah. Okay. However, there's no guarantee that you're going to come back as a human being. Okay. Yeah. Now, you look at an animal's life, it's not exactly a very pleasant life, yeah? It's not that pleasant. You know? I'd rather prefer <laughs> to be a human being than an animal, right? Most, yeah, so, definitely. therefore, it's actually, you suffer that, and that, that life is not as pleasurable as a human life. You can't connect to God, and also you can't do the, the moral actions. There's certain limits you can do, but still, you suffer as an animal compared so to human So how do you get back? Well, you're here now, right? Okay. Yeah. So you've already did something good in your past life, to be right. born as a human being. Simple fact. So you've already got lottery ticket in your pocket. You're walking around with lottery ticket, yeah? Mm -hmm. Lottery ticket says, if I cash this in with God's name, I can connect to God. Right? However, if you were not told this, I like, see that tripod, yeah? It's mm -hmm. got three legs, yeah? Okay. For us, God is like that. What, what we need to succeed in this world is three things, yeah? We need to meditate upon God's name. We need to uh, live an honest life. Okay. Earn our own living, yeah? And we need to um, uh, share what we earn. Right. Those three things. Now, a lot of people say, you know what? I just want to be a good guy. Earn, share, yeah? I was just about to ask. Yeah, exactly. But then they don't meditate on God's name. So guess what happens with a tripod? You take one leg away. Falls it falls over. A table could stand up with three legs, but not a tripod. Yeah. So it's, it's these three principles are key. Yeah. So a lot of people in the world just say, just be a good person. But the problem with that is, see that lottery ticket? You're not cashing it in, because the experience of God is so amazing, and it's our true purpose. Right. Right. So it's like, um, it's kind of like being Superman, and decide not to walk, decide not to fly. So I don't want to fly. I just want to walk around. Just want to walk around. Well, why would you want to do that? If you could fly. 
You'd fly, right? I'd fly. Yeah, yeah you'd fly. I'd fly. If you were a Jedi Knight and you had the lightsaber and you were like, you know, out there and you just saw stuff happening, well, you wouldn't go out there and start doing crying. You'd get the lightsaber. Yeah. So it's like yeah. potential. It's basically about potential. And what God wants us to do is to actually experience that potential of being connected to, to connected to the one. Yeah. So for us, it's just key. Like you've got this thing on top of your head. It's like it's not mine. It's yours. If you if you had your eyes closed, you'd say, you know what? I'd like to have my eyesight back. So if you could have eyesight, you would want it. Yeah. In the same way, we say, look, if your tenth door is there for you, why don't you try and open it? Right. Yeah. And experience the divine. And the experience will lead the way. So in the, in all Sikh temples, like the ones that we're going to now. So this evening, I'm going to be doing talks at the temple here. Where is it? Dix, Dixie, Dixie. It's um. Dixie and Dixie and Erie. It's in it's in it's in oh, the like Toronto. Mississauga, right? Yes, in Mississauga, yeah. Okay, yeah. I know I know where that is. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be doing talks there, we're gonna do a QA. Actually today's topic is gonna to be about atheism. Yeah. Like what do atheists say and what do Sikhs say in response to atheism? Okay. So you wanna come down, it's gonna be at seven thirty PM and there'll be a free meal afterwards. Seven thirty. I'm yeah. gonna try. But you know, I'm free meal, I have a free meal there, schedule. so don't worry about cooking dinner for yourself, you know. Just turn up, <laughs> check out the free, <laughs> the free food. Meal, and, sure. and you know, if you want, the thing about the free food, yeah, which is really cool, is there are three reasons behind it. The first one is experience equality. Right. The second one is giving access to basic rights. So to food, everybody. shelter, water. It's not good enough to say, yeah, everybody should have equal rights. You need to provide it, right? So the gurus provide it. They're like a king, they're providing the food for the people, yeah? Right. But the third thing is you can serve people there. Anybody could turn up. You could turn up, cover your head, you could just be washing up dishes for people. It's just a learning how to give. Because otherwise, we'd always remain selfish. So Guru's made a system where we could learn how to give. Okay. Yeah. So turn up, 7.30. Or uh, it'll be tomorrow as well. So every night... Probably tomorrow. Tomorrow at 7.30? Same yeah. thing? Yeah. If anything, it'll be tomorrow. Alright, man. So I Yo, forgot I your name. Sorry. That. Omari. Omari. Yeah. Nice to meet you, buddy. Nice to meet you. Alright. Well, check, check it out on YouTube, man. Alright. No right. no okay. Say hello to your friend for us as well. Bye Guru, bye Guru, bye Guru, bye I just wanted to say I have actually come here uh, to Eaton Centre downtown Toronto to meet uh, my brother Jagarad Singh and I just wanted to say the project that is uh, taking uh, Basics to Sikhi is you know something that was missing uh, uh, in the youth uh, today so I just wanted to like meet him and say you know Jardikla uh, to him uh, now and the future and the, any future projects uh, that he has uh, you know will be undertaking. You said your family across the world watches it yeah? Yes yeah, so I have a brother-in-law sister in Australia a family UK Toronto Canada other parts like in Vancouver so oh. they all actually watch uh, the That's YouTube cool. channels that Baji actually has on so uh, you know Something that was really missing, uh, what I can actually say. So, Kerpa to Paji and the project and uh, Basics to Sikhi as well. Basics of Sikhi. Basics of Sikhi, sorry. Why Guruji Khalsa? Why Guruji Khalsa?